Let's take a quick look at uh, some stuff about proportions, percentages, and percentage points and how they relate to what we do in regression analysis. These are concepts that sometimes create problems for students and let's make sure we're straight on uh, what they all mean and how to deal with them. So here's a little news flash. Uh, suppose we find that the unemployment rate in some jurisdiction has increased from 10 percent to 15 percent. So what could we say about that? Well, some people might say, hmm, unemployment went up by 5%. Uh, but somebody else might say, well, wait a minute, unemployment, unemployment just went up by 50% from 10 to 15. Hmm, well, which is it? And how can we make sure we use terminology that keeps those two things straight? Uh, well, let's review quickly what the unemployment rate is, and the unemployment rate is defined as the proportion of the labor force that's out of work and seeking a job. So, as an example, you could end up with a 10% unemployment rate, you, uh, if we had 10,000 people who were unemployed and there were a total of 100,000 people in the labor force. And again, the labor force is people who are working or actively looking for work. So, 10,000 over 100,000 is 0.1, and 0.1, of course, translates in percent terms to 10%. And then we're just uh, proposing that maybe this increased up to 0.15 or 15%. Maybe we're up to 15,000 people unemployed out of the 100,000 in the labor force. Uh, now, we need to keep track of the fact that there's a conceptual distinction to be made between the change in the proportion unemployed and the proportional change in the unemployment rate and hence the confusion in our headlines. The change in the proportion unemployed is just the, the change in the actual unemployment rate as measured either in proportions or percents, and that would be 0.15 minus 0.10, or 15% minus 10%. That's the change in the level of the unemployment rate, and that's five percentage points. And I want to stress that the best way to put it is in terms of percentage points. That's a change in the proportion. Now, the proportional change is, of course, something very different because here we've gone from 10 to 15 percent working on a base of originally 10 percent. So, uh, as you might have learned somewhere in uh, elementary school, probably, to find the percentage change or the proportional change, we're going to take the actual change, the after minus the before, 15 percent minus 10 percent, divide it by the base that we started at, 10 percent. So, that's going to give us 5 percent over 10 percent or 0 0.05 over 0 0.10, which of course comes out to be 0.5 or 50 percent. So it is true that the unemployment rate has increased by 50 percent, but of course that was only five percentage points. Please try to keep this distinction clear because it's easy to speak loosely and then it's going to lead to confusion. And it can be particularly confusing in the context of regression analysis. So let's take a quick look at an application to these ideas to the regression context. Uh, suppose you run a regression using county data and you're going to try to predict the poverty rate using the local unemployment rate. And we might expect that poverty would go up and down as uh, unemployment went up and down. And let's say you run that regression with uh, the proportion poor, and that's from 0 to 1, the proportion poor in county I is equal to, uh, when you run the regression, 0.11 plus 0.14 times the proportion unemployed. And again, these proportions, the, the p variables, we're thinking as uh, proportions that lie somewhere on the, the range 0 to 1. So again, uh, the proportion unemployed 0.1 would be a 10% unemployment rate. Now, the interpretation of this slope is that an increase of one unit in the proportion unemployed is associated with an increase of uh, sorry, uh, 0.14, that's the slope, in the proportion poor. But note, uh, this is really a quite dramatic increase in the proportion unemployed because uh, an increase of 1 would be a 100 percentage point increase. So that's quite striking. So the question is, uh, is there a, maybe a better way to interpret this regression that's going to think about a change in unemployment that's uh, maybe a little more realistic than a 100 percentage point change. So here's one way to think about it. Again, there's reiterating the uh, equation, the regression, estimated regression equation that I was just referring to. So a better way to interpret this 
regression, in particular that slope of 0.14, might be to consider a kind of a simple thought experiment. An increase of 10 percentage points, say unemployment rate going from 10% up to 20% across counties, an increase of 10 percentage points in the unemployment rate here is associated with an increase uh, in the proportion poor of 0.14 times that change in the unemployment proportion. So that was 0 0.10 if it's 10 percentage points, and that comes out to be 0 0.014, or 1.4 percentage points in the poverty rate. So again, an increase of 10 percentage points in the unemployment rate associated with an increase of 1.4 percentage points in the predicted poverty rate in this regression. Or, if you wanted to put it in terms of one percentage point, a, and a change of one percentage point in the proportion unemployed is going to lead to a 0.14 times 0.01, that's one percentage point, or 0.0014 uh, proportional change in the change in the proportion poor, or 0.14 percentage points, right? So however you do it, if you're going to talk in percent, percentage points, um, you want to translate back and forth to the proportions. And again, these are changes in proportions, not proportional changes. Now, proportional changes in regression can be captured, and the nicest way to do that is to use log-transformed variables. And uh, we have a separate video talking about that, but just to reiterate really quickly how this works, uh, recall that the change in the natural log of any variable, such as y, is approximately equal to the change in y divided by y, and that's due to the derivative of the natural log being 1 over y, and consequently we can interpret that as essentially uh, the proportional change in y. So, if you want to estimate a regression that has coefficients that will capture the effects of proportional changes in the variables, it's the, the best thing to do is to log transform those variables first. So, for example, suppose you ran this regression where we estimate the relationship between the natural log of a quantity variable and the natural log of a price variable, and we find that the estimated equation is the uh, predicted natural log of the quantity is equal to 1.7 minus 2.2 times the natural log of the price. Well, this implies, of course, that the, pr the slope there, of negative 2.2, is the uh, rise over the run, so the change in the log of the price for a change in, and I have a little mistake there, the log of change in the log of Q for a change in the log of price is negative 2.2, or to interpret this in proportional changes, a 1% change in price, increase in price, is associated with a 2.2% reduction in the predicted quantity. Um, and that's of course what we would call a, an elasticity. So, if you want to learn more about those interpretations, uh, see our video, Interpreting Log Specifications.